March 2014, and Lancaster University plays host to an intensive soil science summer school. A week of lectures, hands-on research, and a team challenge to win a research grant. I hope that what the students will gain is a, as well as a platform of broader soil knowledge, they will gain a greater insight, a greater wisdom about the bigger picture. And kicking off today, our postgrads receive lectures from two key speakers with knowledge of cutting edge imaging techniques. What is X ray computed tomography? What use is it for you? You take a sample, you pass an X ray through that sample, and we measure the retardation of the X ray. And we can use that to convert it to get information about what that material looks like inside. A course like this is absolutely essential because for many of these students, the wide variety of expertise that exists in the UK for soil science might not necessarily exist in their, their institute. Soil science issues are really at the heart of a number of very important global issues, regularly discussed in the media, of key importance to politicians. These issues are more important now than they've ever been. Theory over, it's time for some practical lab experience. We try to understand the makeup, the fabric of the soil, and we scan that at different projections, and that allows us to penetrate through some fairly dense objects. And we want to look at the structure of that, particularly the porosity. But as well as cutting edge experiments and high tech imaging equipment, there's also something a little more portable for use in the field. This is an electromagnetic meter, and this is designed for, you know, shallow soil mapping. A bit like a metal detector. So how do researchers begin to make sense of all this complex data they're collecting? The Image J is a industry standard image processing software. You can have a little play with it yourself. For many of them, this will be the first time they've ever seen what structure looks like at, at these really high resolutions. So that's quite exciting for them. The idea is really just to whet their appetite, to, to really have them get to a point where they think, yeah, this is interesting, I, I want to learn more about it. I'm going to focus a little bit more on once we've done those scans, what does it mean for biology? What can we measure and focus on why should we do this? Is this really the way we should go? Structure is what drives everything and that's where all the action takes place. I think a course like this is incredibly significant for students to get an awareness of what's all going on in soil science research at the moment. It affects food security, it affects climate change, it affects water security, water flooding. The problem we're facing is worldwide is that soils are in decline but it takes decades to bring that soil back and to form it by natural processes. So very quickly, by the way, we manage our soil, we are damaging our soils. And it happens at the rate which is slow enough that we don't worry about it when we look outside in the field. But at the same time, it's too fast to secure the future of the next generation. And that's a massive challenge that we're facing. Now it's time for our group of postgrads to be introduced to the most interactive part of their summer school. They're split into teams and set the challenge of pitching for a research grant. If you go into a research orientated world, you will need to learn the trade of convincing people to fund your research. And you will of course develop your teamwork and presentation skills as we move through to Friday morning because there's going to be a, a grand finale where the teams will be all convincing the panel to fund your research programme. And so the brainstorming sessions begin under the watchful eye of team mentors. Going really well actually. I'm really impressed with how people from different aspects of soil science are getting together and actually starting to talk about how everything from like a micro scale all the way up to global climate change and how it could be interrelated. The guys have uh, made some, some real progress, came up with some really good big picture ideas. The challenge for them now is going to be to try and narrow down and, and develop some of the science to deliver on some of the, the big issues that they've, they've identified. Certainly in my team I think they're developing a, a real understanding of how their work fits into the wider global issues. So I started to think that bit bigger. So with the day drawing to a close and less than 48 hours left before the big presentations, how are the ideas taking shape? We first started off just with a blank, absolute blank canvas uh, to flip chart to how our research areas could actually lead into a NERC remit. That basically just opened a massive can of worms. <laughs> we decided to focus on the urbanisation. 
It's been a useful way of sort of taking what we've learned in lectures and actually thinking about how you can turn that into a project. Where's the payoff? What's the balance? If we did improve porosity, then that would have a small effect on it. Clearly plenty to think about, and with teams working right into the night, mentor Phil decides to take a late checkup on his team. Let's see how they're doing. Left them to it again. Um, <laughs> Team John, they're already packed in. We're, they're already going we're just, home. We're, we're finishing. Come so on. much progress already made. <laughs> we think it's in the bag. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> what it, he's going to the bar already. OK, let's go and have a look at Team Phil. Let's see how we're doing. Hello, Team Phil. How's it going? Our uh, title at the moment is um, using grasses and a little heat amended soils to improve river water quality and mitigate flooding. You got it. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're getting there. One of the key objectives of the summer school is to place the studies of individual PhD students into a wider soil science context. This morning's lecture from Helena is aimed at doing just that. I want to place soil carbon in the context of soil security. This is where a lot of research is going now. Soils are quite fundamental to the goods and services we want from the environment. And you're going to start working with social scientists and economists and politicians. Lecture over, it's boots on for some more inspiration at the sharp end of research. Never has the phrase field study been so apt. My name is Reza, I'm a third year PhD student working on improving the, the effectiveness of buffer strips. We want to give them a feel for how you might create an experiment to monitor erosion in the field. Um, talk through some of the, the difficulties in doing that. And, and also think a bit about how you deal with, with issues such as uh, replication of experiments. Hello students, hello world. I'm very pleased to be able to present this lecture to you, which represents a summary of the last 20 years of my research in the area of soil water transfer. The students have relocated again, uh, this time to a multimedia lecture theatre back at Lancaster University, and a talk from Phil that's being beamed live around the globe. We've got fine scale soil science, molecular, we've got lysimeter studies, plot studies, and catchment studies. And I want to finish now by showing you the, the film that we've produced, which really sums up the story I've just presented to you. Water. It's our life source and we're expected to look after it. By 2027, the European Union expects all water bodies to have good ecological status. It's so helpful to make a movie to illustrate some of the things that we talk about in the lecture theatre. And of course, additionally, it means that people can watch things online and they can watch it in, in their own time. And the world can learn from it, not just the students who are in the lecture theatre at the time. Uh, it also depends on what you're actually into. And it's not just the students who can be anywhere. Next up, our postgrads are treated to a live lecture and Q&A via Skype with Dr Matt Aikenhead. We're pioneering, I think, some exciting new ways of learning. We're able to use webinars uh, um, and Skype connections, online conferencing, so students can actually interrogate an expert from anywhere around the world, and that's really exciting. It's now the eve of the Research Challenge presentations. Time to check once again how the team's ideas are shaping up. You know how there are roads everywhere and no one really knows what's going on underneath the road? And because of population growth, um, a lot more people are going to be living in the urban environment soon, putting a lot more pressure on urban soils. So we want to characterise them and find out what's going on. So we're looking at how to use uh, fauna and flora um, to increase pore, uh, increase pore capacity to ultimately reduce the risk of flooding and improve water quality. Our team is working on trying to find the optimum balance between water quality, food production and carbon storage in soils. We're looking at ground source heat pumps and uh, sort of many different impacts that they might have in terms of ecosystem functions um, and ecosystem services. So with the pressure on and expectations high, Team John put in a late bid to wow the judges with something a little bit different. What they're trying to do is to build a, a little microcosm of, of the soil that's been sealed by tarmac, which they can then use in their presentation tomorrow.
With some teams still working busily away, the room begins to fill up with students and mentors alike for the final presentations of the research challenge. Welcome everybody to the final stretch of this Soil Underfoot course. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the different groups have come up with. So a big, big uh, round of applause for Team Elena as they take the stage. My presentation is pretty much a global synthesis of vulnerability. Seeing if there is an optimum balance between water quality, food production and carbon storage potential. We have a new soil profile within our environment that soil scientists have neglected. So this is just a quick demonstration. Luckily, Lancaster University provides a perfect campus to look at the ceiling over time. And uh, Professor John Whitten has volunteered to offer his car parking space to, <laughs> to drill. What we're seeking to do with our WAGAS um, soil amendments is increase the soil porosity so that we can increase the amount of water that's soaking into the soil, reducing the amount of overland flow that's moving on into the rivers. We are going to look at this really novel project and it's looking at the impact of geothermal energy on soil ecosystem functions. We're going to have a particular focus on increased flood intensity and frequency, uh, inc increased temperature and increased CO2 concentration. With the presentations finished, it's time for the votes to be cast. Students from each team vote on which other teams they think should win the prize. And it's a nervous wait to see who will be the winners. Best research project goes to Team Catherine. So Team Catherine, if you'd like to come up, well done. Excellent. Well done, folks. Great job. Great job. The week's coming to a close. There's been lectures, practical lab and field work, and of course, the research challenge won by Team Catherine. <laughs> but at the end of it all, what is there that the students can take away from their week at the Soil Conference? Inspirational, just inspirational. The quality of the lecture has been fantastic. I think my outlook has changed in terms of sort of taking a step back. So we actually see the importance of coming together in a group and how ideas develop, working with different people. I've filled in a few gaps, I've thought of things out of my experience. I've come up with a few ideas for my PhD. Principally confidence that I've got a holistic understanding or, or a better understanding of, of soil science as a whole. So with a new generation inspired, what's the future of soil science in Britain? Politicians and advisors are really starting to recognise that soils are central to some of the big global challenges that we face. I don't think soils have ever been on the agenda as highly. This is the most exciting time ever to have been a soil scientist. The guys in the room today are the future of soil science. They are now creating networks of uh, colleagues that they can work with and collaborate with into the future. That for the society is a fantastic legacy to be leaving behind. 